audiences. So in addition to forming a good campaign message, it's important to be able to understand you know, who you're talking to. And this is a part of the tool that we're, we're especially proud of because we have access to a lot of the data that helps power this tool. But it's important that uh, candidates can, can speak coherently on what their path to victory is because it, again, is another question that gets asked a lot, like, how are you going to do this? That process truly just starts with pulling numbers. So first and foremost, how many registered voters live in your district? How many of them are likely to turn out in the upcoming election? And that's oftentimes based on how many of them have voted in the past. What's your win number and your vocal? Those are two related but different numbers, right? The, the win number is what's the slimmest uh, a number of votes you can get and still win the election. So if 10,000 people are going to vote, your win number is 5,001. But it's important to shoot for a little bit more than that because if 10,000 and 200 people vote, you're losing that election by 99 votes instead of uh, instead of winning it by one vote. So we encourage candidates to build in a margin of anywhere up two and a half to three percent just to be safe. And that's the number you're ultimately planning for. Once you have those numbers, you can build your path out. And your path to victory is is a, is a sort of a slice and dice of your community, you know, built on issues. What are the issues that are uniquely you're able to speak to that are authentic to your campaign and will connect with people and are hopefully the core issues that the community wants to see answered? Uh, the demographics of your voters, right? You can build a path to victory that's based on you know political demographics. If you're a young person, maybe you're trying to speak uh, heavily to young voters, or if you're an older person, maybe you're leaning into older voters. Uh, you know, being able to build coalitions uh, that way is important. And also uh, understanding uh, what your opponent's likely to, going to do too, right? And, and how have they served to their community to date? So a candidate you know, who, who has been in office for a long time has probably made a lot of promises. And this is the piece of the campaign process where people generally go out into the community to, to fish for that kind of information. You know, talk to friends, talk to family, go to coffee shops, get a sense for uh, how people feel about the incumbent. Do they even know who they are? What are the issues that they care most about? Do they think that their municipal government or their city government or their state government has done a good job of answering those concerns? All of this stuff is, is things that you bank away as you continue to you know, flesh out your path. Once you have your path, you can start mapping out what are you gonna do to achieve them? And for people who have uh, experienced an election recently, there were many on November the 7th of this year you were probably the recipient of, whether you wanted to or not, of a political tactic. And they come in all different shapes and sizes, uh, TV ads, social media ads, mail pieces, texts, calls. All of those things are examples of ways that campaigns try to get in front of voters, try to get their message out there. And all of this stuff is targeted, right? It's important once you have your path to victory to understand who you're talking to and what the most effective way to talk to them if you're an older person, for example, or you're leaning heavily on older voters, you might put up ads in the local newspaper or go up on radio. If you're trying to lean into young people, you may totally ignore all of that and just spend all of your money talking to people on TikTok. There's not a necessarily a right or a wrong answer, but it's important that your tactics, and oftentimes you're doing a combination of them, uh, are connected to the communities and the coalitions that you're trying to build. And finally, and what sometimes is, is regarded as the driest part of a campaign plan and glossed over, the timeline's important. You know, what are the milestones in the journey that you need to take note of? You can't just uh, say, hey, I'm going to arrive at the final destination on uh, November 7, 2023, and not check in to progress things as they're going along. Most campaigns do set goals around things like early voting. Maybe holidays like Labor Day and the 4th of July are big ones for campaigns. Uh, ballot access goals, all of this stuff. Uh, AI takes a huge responsibility and, and our AI in particular works to help map out the, the roadmap. But it's important that candidates, you know, think carefully about where they anticipate they want to be. Uh, you, you don't want to be checking into, you know, map progress uh, on your campaign and realize that it's 10 days to an election and you're not exactly where you thought you wanted to be. So a timeline more than anything helps build accountability into a campaign and make sure that things are staying organized.